Hey bodies, welcome to Amass Games. My name is Simon and today I'm bringing you how to set up, play and review the game Turn and Taxis or Turn on Taxis as this is the first edition of the game which came out in 2006 and won the Game of the Year in 2006 which basically is the most prestigious Game of the Year there is and it's the Spiel des Jahres which basically means it's the best family weight, easy to understand, easy to teach game which has a lot of replayability, very much family friendly, um, with you know great depth and replayability. So first I'm just gonna show you the back of the board because there's nothing to really do with it other than look at uh, this emblem. And this game is all about being a postmaster. You're trying to be the best postmaster, the most victorious postmaster in Germany back in the day. So what I'm gonna do now is start setting up the game. So to be the most victorious, you need to get the most victory points. Everybody is going to take one of these little turn summary cards. They are in German, but as you can see, they are in English as well. So everyone's going to take one of them each. I think we only need one just to give you a demonstration for that. You're then going to be setting up these various locations on the board. So I've put these in the kind of order that they should be in. So this is to do with basically who can complete these various areas first. And then you'll get victory points for doing so. This is a network route building game with some area control. So similar to prior winners of this award, we have games such as uh, Ticket to Ride. So if you're the first person to basically have a house, a little postal office in each area, you're going to get six victory points. The second person will get five and so on. This area is Baden. So we're now talking different regions of Germany here. And this will also go to the person who basically triggers the end of the game. So you're trying to play out all of your 20 offices um, offices or post offices. And there's another way of ending the game too, uh, but I'll come on to that in a moment. And that's to do with basically having a, a seven route carriage. So you're going to place one there, you're going to place the two. And as you can see, there's a few of them. So it's a relatively small region. It's just going to take three of them on here too. Now, this game is actually on Board Game Arena, and I knew about it when I was in beta. With a few bugs I've recently encountered on beta, I've um, I held off playing it. Uh, so this is Bonham Schulzberg or something like that. That goes over there. We have uh, this region down here, which is Bayern, or you know, Bayern Munich. So this is the southern part of Germany. And on, um, on Board Game Arena, it had over 30,000 plays by the time I played it. And someone said, Simon, look, there's only literally, you know, one video or so out. Why don't you do a video? Now, as I own the game, I have played online and it is very good. Um, it's a very great game to play. And of course, if you don't own this game, you know, I highly recommend if you can try and seek it out. You know, I have held on to it. And uh, as you can see, I'm still setting up the game and you do avoid having to do those kind of things if you're doing it, obviously, online because all the setups taken care of now down here this is to do with roots if you're the first person to get certain route lengths then you're going to gain victory points again it's so being the first in any of these paths is very good because you're ultimately getting one point more than the next person to go there now just as i'm still setting up i have only played this two player so if you really want to be interested in playing this uh, with more players and i do recommend it with more players then please be aware that I'm just going to be setting this up and having a couple of turns at most playing this, you know, as a two player. So I'll switch to roll down here. So we have a three, we have a two and a one. As you can see, everything um, goes from one upwards. And some regions, obviously like Bayern being the biggest area, will give you most victory points. And I'll get on to actually how you're getting these victory points too. Okay, so as you can see, there's lots of different places you can be getting points. You can get it based on the length of routes going here and of course going a bit of everywhere. So you're going to take some of these cards, these nice small dinky cards, which I'm going to have laid down here as well. You're going to shuffle these up and they're going to be placed out on this kind of zone here. And like Ticket to Ride, you can choose to go to these locations or you can choose to just draw blindly from the deck. See the various locations you can go to. You're also going to pick a colour. So you can see the box is still in shot and you're going to pick a colour that you want to play with uh, let's pick blue, and of course somebody else could be picking red. I think I can demonstrate this just with a single colour. Okay, so I have this deck over here. I think there are three of each of these different cards. So just be aware that if you're going to be playing this out, you're going to be uh, being aware that if there's one Mannheim here and you miss out on it, then there's a couple more being there. You've got to push your luck in case you need it. So now we're talking about these train or these routes down here. So there's 
four of each because you can play up to four players. And again, you can try and uh, increase where you're going to increase, increase where your carts can go up to. So you have the three root, four root, five root, six root, and the largest you can get for points is that seven root. And finally, I don't think you really need to show it, but basically if you are blue, say you're out of pieces, you can tell who's a blue player, yellow, red, and green, etc. Okay, so on your turn, there's a number of different things you can do. You're gonna add a city card to your hand. So first and foremost, you look out here and you're gonna get victory points if you're the first to complete, say, all of the ones in Baden. So if you're the first to get a house in all these areas, you're gonna get three victory points, okay? And that's gonna be hidden so nobody knows what you have. Separately, anybody else who then completes it is going to get two victory points, etc. So you can always go back to where you've been, but you might not want to. So let's go ahead and just tell you about the different actions you can do. So on your turn, you always get a bonus action that you can choose to use. In this instance, what you can be doing, and I'm just going to move this a bit over to keep it more central, is to say, OK, well, what I want to be doing is drawing two cards. So if you want, you can go over here and draw two cards using the postal carrier as you pick up two cards. Early game, you might want to do that. But right now, let's look and see where we want to go. So we're trying to lay out these routes, and you've got to continue going from where you start. So right now, I have Stuttgart, which is fine. I could go here, and then I could pick up Mannheim, and then I could be going here. As soon as I have a third place, I can then claim a route and start placing down my houses. But I'll get on to that in a moment. Equally, let's look at where else I can go. I've got Innsbruck, which isn't connected anywhere much at the moment. Pilsen, which uh, has Nuremberg, and then... Yeah, so we're kind of stuck here. We've only got two locations, so we're waiting for more stuff. So based on what we have presently, I'm going to start at the edge of the map, give myself some options. I'm going to take Mannheim, okay? And then a new card will be drawn, so I can see what's coming up next. And Würzburg, which actually I can go to. With Nuremberg being down there as well, and Stuttgart, I'm going to take Würzburg. Okay, and that'll be literally my turn. I'll be doing those things. So that's the first thing you do. The second thing you do in your turn, once you've drawn at least one card, remember, is then play a city card. So now I've got these two cards, they're pretty much like in my hand, and I'm declaring, right, I'm committing myself to playing Mannheim. That means I must be going out from Mannheim, okay? If for any reason you cannot, or you don't want to, you've discarded that route. You can no longer continue where you're going. So now I've played that one card, and then you move on to scoring if you can, if you've got at least three in a row lined up. I don't, so that goes to my opponent. My opponent goes, and it's back to me. So imagine these cards are still here for whatever reason. They've drawn from here, say. So. Now I can again uh, pick a card. Remember, I've got this in my hand. I'm planning to go to Würzburg. I'm going to go to Stuttgart. So let's take a single card this time. And I don't bother using the uh, that postal carrier. Now what I could do is actually use a postmaster instead, so it's the different action. Again, you can use anything you like, but I'm going to choose to use the postal master and play two cards. So now I'm going Stuttgart to Würzburg. So now I've gone Mannheim, Würzburg, Stuttgart, and I'm going to claim a route. So now what you can do is either place all of them. So imagine I happen to go Mannheim, Stuttgart, and uh, Karlsruhe then I could place one there and one there. Because you can place all of them in one of those colourful regions, or you can place one in each region you touch. As you can see, that's better, because I'm laying out more houses. That has an extra benefit, because you lose victory points for any houses you have left over. So now I've laid out those things, and now my opponent can say, all right, so he probably doesn't need to care about this anymore. So that's another thing I can do, and then of course it's their turn. Now these cards will go away, and... Because I have laid a root of three, I also claim one of these. So this now allows me to basically have an additional three victory points in the game. If I had four, I get four instead of three. I'll put it back, but you can basically see the point. Now there's another thing you could do on your turn. So imagine that's been my turn, they've had their turn, and now it's back to me again. I can add a city card to my hands, so I'm going to start somewhere else. I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm going to start completing this route. Well, there's nothing here presently. I could just take one off the top and try and get lucky. I've got nothing else to lose because of other cards. And it's Budweiss. So we've got Budweiss down there. Um, obviously we've got Lintz and Pilsen. I've got to go to one of them or I discard this. So I'll take the Pilsen card um, as a second card I take because I chose to go for that postal carrier. But let's assume I, I don't do that. Apologies for that noise. Um, instead, what I do is actually I uh, go on and take the administrator. So I actually say, well, I don't want any of these cards here. 
And let's say I didn't take that card. I just skip all of these. And so I've taken one card. So I took one of them card and then I'm also going to clear this out, maybe because I wanted some different cards. And again, but I haven't got enough cards uh, to obviously play out a route. So I kept that card that I had before, that Pilsen card, sorry, the Bud Bites card. And now it's down to, so I did have that card and then I played the extra card just to freshen things up, which luckily does actually have lints for me. And then obviously it's their turn because I haven't got enough cards, but imagine it's back to my turn again. I've got my one card, I can draw one card. And in this instance, um, I take lints and then I place out a card here. And now what I can do is actually consider maybe playing out the cartwright. However, to do the cartwright, you do need a minimum of three first. So imagine I did have three, let's say from Lintz, where can I go? I've got Salzburg. So imagine I managed to get this, let's say this turn I did the postal carrier and then a future turn or something like that. Remember playing out of cards, so I played out Bud Vice, this turn I played out Lintz. Um, I had to hept onto this one, but on a future turn, I've now got three. I could use a cartwright to acquire something too higher. So I could have got to here. Now in this instance, you've got to build an order. So the next card I would be taking anyway would be this one. So at least you've got three, it would be worth two more. But in this case, I've got the four. The reason why you might want to go for the cart right is to perhaps um, get the five or the six or maybe the seven. Because again, that would trigger the end of the game. And it's worth 10 victory points. So if you get 10 victory points for obviously getting a seven route, which is possible, again, using the cart right because you only need five in a row. Now... If you have the cart right though, you won't actually claim the bonuses here. You're only going to claim if you had an actual route of five. So there's um, a few different ways of getting points. You're trying to be the first to complete a zone to get points here. First to get one in each to get six points, which is more than any one region alone. Five is the maximum. Or you can choose to get points this way by trying to get longer routes. And finally, for each route you get that's longer, you're also going to get points. So there's lots of different ways you can get points. That pretty much summarises the game. Like I said, you can end the game, either be the first to reach with seven, or if you happen to finish off all of your items. Now, uh, first and foremost, if you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, hopefully it's been very of interest. Uh, finally, also, please make sure you check out the descriptions and tell me in the comments, obviously, anything that you found enjoyable or want to know more. And lastly, uh, I, didn't, I do reply very fast to comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. This will be available on the Board Game uh, Geek as well as on Board Game Arena, so you can find out a little more information about it. But crucially, I find this a very immersive and fun game. I find it very interesting, I find it very replayable, because each time you can either try and focus on completing regions, maybe I've seen people win by getting one in each. You know, I've had a tie break, which led to 27 all, which is triggered by the person who actually uh, triggered that tie break as well. So whoever claimed that final route first, because it gives the opponent then, you know, have a more of an option as to what they want to go for. So lots of different ways of scoring, a lot of different variety. And again, it does have the air of control, but ultimately you can go different places. You're looking in the cars and see what's there. The cars are nice and small and obviously easy to display. And normally I'd play them underneath here, but based on the size of the board, I chose not to do that. So again, if you have any questions about this, of course, this is in the Spielders Yards playlist that I have. Then of course you can check out other games. I've um, been very impressed by this one. This is by one of the best designers of all time. We have um, Andreas Seafarth, you know, he's done games such as Manhattan, which you can find a video for on here as well, as well as Puerto Rico, which has been ranked as I believe the number one game of all time as well. Obviously, if you speak German, you've also got all this background information on uh, the history of these post offices as well. And uh, I think the name Turn und Taxis, of course, I don't quite know. I think it's to do with um, an old legacy uh, name for the kind of brand that existed for these postal offices. Uh, what I also like is actually how we've gone from the countryside. We've moved into, obviously, the forest. We've then moved into sort of the town and finally into the, you know, the town or the cities, the city centres. So I find that very effective. In terms of actually how it goes into the box, I think it works very well too. And obviously you've got different backings to show you uh, how not to confuse your cards. And again, quite a nice linen feel. Like I said, you know, this has really stood the test of time. You know, 15 years, uh, this has uh, maintained itself very nicely. So again, if you have any questions, if this is the kind of thing that floats your boat, then I highly recommend you check it out. Um, missed off a piece there, but as you can see, it's uh, not not difficult. It makes sense why it one builders yards. I can fully understand that. 
And like I said, only a couple of years after the root building game Ticket to Ride, which has sold something like 35 plus million copies, I still find it uh, very appealing to play this one, which you know, has a slightly you know, smaller love for it. The Rio Grande made it and Hansen Gluck, and neither kind of exists uh, in much of a format these days. And if you are looking for the English rules, they are quite easy to find, as well as the English version too. But hopefully for Turn Taxis, this um, is something I've been finally getting around to record after many months, or I should say years and decades. And hopefully this has been of interest. Thank you very much. Bye for now.